Hi everyone. It's Joe. <clears throat> it's Joe. Can't stop crying. Which is good. I haven't cried in years. Welcome to our galaxy where we talk about chronic illness and dissociative identity disorder life we're living. Today we're talking about integration because I think that's what's happening to me. It's not like someone else. People kind of maybe think of integration with DID. It's when like your parts come whole again, I think, or like all of the parts of you go together. Maybe it's like that. I don't know, but it doesn't feel like that and it doesn't work like that. It's more like uh, my skill set isn't working for the life we're living and so and I'm so tired and I don't I don't like doing what I'm doing and I'm not happy most of the time so and my it's like my job as protector doesn't make sense anymore and so I don't know what to do except freak out or be exhausted so I think what's happening is I'm integrating into somebody else with somebody else. Um, and I don't really know what that's going to mean. And I don't know if it's even true, but that's how it feels like, is that it's like for so long, if not been wanting to be a host, I don't really like it. It's really exhausting to me. And it's not, there's not very much fun that is easy to have. I have to work really hard to make things fun for me. Um, so then oh, we're just stuck inside every day, all day. Who orchestrated this life? It's not nice. And then I get heat stroke at the drop of a hat. So I've only got like three more seconds before my room is too hot because I turned off all the fans and shut the door because I just wanted to make a video where I freak out. So <clears throat> I think what's happening is we're integrating. I'm integrating. I think it feels more like I'm being pulled back or like enveloped into somebody else maybe. It's like my people heard my cry that it's too, I can't do this anymore and that someone, someone else has to take over. So that was, that was good. <laughs> That's nice of them. <laughs> I didn't realize it was, it might be this type of a situation where I don't know what will happen, but it's like, will I, well, like, will I still be partnered with Corey or will they have to, will my system, will it all be different for our partner taking our part? Oh. And like, we have kids that we love and that we're helping to raise and that consider us their family and so... And they know, like, the name they know for us is Joe, and that's my name. But if I go somewhere else, if I become someone else, or if I get enveloped into another person, what happens to Joe? What happens to all of my me? Because um, even with everything being so difficult for me, I love being me, and I will really miss being me. But it feels like... Um, It just feels like it's it's going to have to change in order for us to keep going in our life, to make our life feel nice for all of us and make sense. Um, <clears throat> I wonder too if somebody if I'm not if I'm not the person in front of most of the time, or if I'm not even a person <laughs> in our system. Um, I wonder if that will make it easier for everyone else to enjoy the life we already have. Because there's nothing wrong with it, really. Like, yeah, we have a disability, and we're housebound, and it's hard raising children. Um, and it's hard learning how to be partners all the time. <laughs> but none of those things are, and none of them are bad things. They're just so hard for me. And... <clears throat> in Seattle 
I always feel like I'm in Seattle and then I, I know that I'm not and that's hard. I miss it. That's the city where I came to be. That's how I came to exist. Um, we were living in this studio apartment. It looked like a tiny little Hogwarts. Oh my god, I love that building. Um, so it had, um, we were living there and there was someone else who had been in charge for too long and they also were having a hard time doing anything about life and it was really scary back then and there wasn't anyone looking out for us. We didn't have a good protector and we were in a lot of dangerous situations without realizing it. So, and then we were also coming out as trans and non-binary and needed to recreate ourselves. But this was back when no one was really communicating about our what was wrong, what was going on with all the parts and all the people. And uh, we had no language for dissociative identity disorder. We barely even knew about multiple personality disorder. So there was this one night when we just sat down and we made, there's this cute little cafe by the big window that looked over at the monorail track that came from the um, Space Needle and went to downtown to the mall. So we could watch it going by and then down out the window was the sidewalk and busy street Fifth Avenue is really busy and we just watched it all the time all the time um <clears throat> so we just decided to pick just to create a new way to be so that we could move through the world better so we picked our name Joe Proganoskis um and we picked Joe because there's a because of little women come on who didn't know that one already who couldn't who couldn't call that somebody couldn't i don't know anyways joe the character we've loved since we were children tiny little when our body was a child and um joe goes through a transformation too of gender queerness and being a writer and wanting to sustain herself by herself but then also having someone she loves and having all these children she adopts and some children she gives birth to herself and um, she was, she, she meant a lot to us and we were like, that's, that's a good name for us. And then we picked Proganoskis again from a book. Um, it's called A Wind in the Door. It's by Madeline Lingle. And Proganoskis is a plural character in a singular body, um, is a cherubim, which is like multiple cherubs, but is a singular entity and has all these, it's just this like orb of wings and eyes and smoke and it drops scales and uh, this confusion of being. I love Prognoskis. Again, a book we read when we were kids and read still because it's a very comforting story. Some of the language is way outdated and a little ableist, but the Prognoskis character, <laughs> stick with me. Um, so we decided we wanted to be part we were, a band, we were letting go of our old last name because it was connected to so much abuse and trauma and we didn't have anyone in that last name who was really being our family at the time. And so we were like, nope, done. We are creating our own new family by ourselves and we need to pick a clan to be a part of. And so Proganoskis meant uh, so much to us and we felt so similar to Proganoskis. Makes sense, so much sense now. <laughs> and then also... Um, Proganoskis didn't really have anyone in his clan either. And so we felt like it just made, like it just worked out. We were just like, this is, this is who we are. Um, so now that's our legal name. We switched it to that a long time ago. We changed it to that. So, um, but now I'm like, wait, if I go away, what happens to Joe Proganoskis? It's still our legal name, but will it still be? Will it still make sense to whatever comes next? Will it, people still be able to carry it? Or will we have to do a whole nother legal process? I don't think we should, but I honestly don't want to make decisions anymore. I don't want to have to pick or orchestrate our life. Um, I really just want to be a space creature and go orbit somewhere and just consider how that feels and what it looks like to be in the universe 
I was looking at pictures of space today. Because I was trying to find a picture of Andromeda. This really big, beautiful one that Hubble took. That's like the most, the largest picture of Andromeda ever. You should go find it. You can zoom in for forever. So I was trying to find, I was looking through all these space photos. And I was just like, our universe is so beautiful. And I don't feel like I'm even a part of it because I'm stuck in a bedroom or stuck in an apartment where it's 100 degrees outside and I feel like I'm dying because the heat makes me feel like I'm dying. It's not even 100, guys. It's like 85. It's probably not even that. I was looking for my phone. You're on my phone. So I know I need to go and be in space. A lot of my, <clears throat> a lot of the other people inside of here are also space creatures. Um, most of us are not human. Yeah, I don't know who's, who is human in here. Um, so, so it's not just like this random, I want to be a space creature. It's just like, that's the construction of this system. Most of us aren't human. Most of us are constellations or stars or dark energy um, so 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 I think it's so it's terrifying and I I hope it works and happens and I also hope it doesn't and I don't know what to expect I don't know what will happen here but it's weird that I've been doing all this work preparing to um like making the channel about not me anymore it's for everyone I'm making all my social media for everyone because I was just like I don't want to be the one and I don't want to be the front I don't want to be running it I don't want to be host everyone should get to do things um, and now I'm like oh that's a sign that something's changing and that we're doing something new so um I don't know what's gonna happen but um I hope whatever it is that it will be better and I hope you'll stick around, find out with me, whoever I become, whatever happens to me. Um, if this is for some reason the last time me as Joe in this way sees, is here with all of you. Oh, jeez, this is emotional. But if it is, um, this channel has been a really big anchor in my life and it's made me understand who I am and who everybody is and it's allowed us to become as whole as we are and as, as big as we are inside like as, I never understood everything inside and now I do and that's thanks to this channel um so you guys have given me so much life and so much love over the years love and I just I could never say enough how much you impact me and how much it means to me that you've been a part of my life and a part of all of our life for however many years we've been on this. Uh, and I hope, I hope for good things for all of you. And I hope that you will look at the universe and see how beautiful it is and keep living and believe in yourself. I love you all. We're going to see you soon.